The enter frame event is a type of event in Flash that gets dispatched just as long as the Flash movie is running. Nothing else really has to happen. The user doesn't have to click on anything or press the keyboard. No interaction is required. You could have a Flash movie that only has one frame with absolutely nothing on the stage, but as long as it's running, the enter frame event gets dispatched. And not only that, this event gets dispatched repeatedly at a constant rate. The main thing it's dependent on is the frame rate of your flash movie. If you have a frame rate of 30 frames per second, then the enter frame event gets dispatched 30 times every one second as well. So I know the enter frame event seems a bit strange at first. What is it for really? Why do we need an event that gets dispatched even if seemingly nothing is happening in the flash movie? So to better understand this event, we'll go ahead and take a look at a few examples of how it can be used to create animation in Flash using code. Instead of adding tweens to the timeline, we'll learn how to animate objects using ActionScript 3 to give you an idea of how the enter frame event can be applied. Let's first try to understand how we can animate an object using code. I've got a function here called move circle, which increases the X position of a movie clip symbol by five pixels. So if I call this function, the circle moves to the right. If I call this function again, then the circle moves again. If I keep calling the function fast enough, then that's when I get the animated effect. So what we need to do here is to find the way to call this function repeatedly without having to manually add numerous function calls so that we can animate the object using code. This is where the enter frame event comes in. We know that the enter frame event gets dispatched numerous times depending on the Flash movie's frame rate. So what we can do is register this function to the enter frame event so that every time the event gets dispatched, then the function is going to run. So by using an enter frame event listener, we are going to be able to animate an object using code. In this first example, we'll create a growing circle animation. Place an instance of a movie clip symbol onto the stage and give it an instance name. Then open up the actions panel. Let's create a variable that's going to be used to assign how much size is going to be added to the circle as it grows. Then add an event listener using the movie clip instance on the stage. Specify event.enter underscore frame and create an event listener function that will increase the size of the movie clip instance. I'm going to call this the grow function. To make the circle increase in size, we can use the width and height properties of the movie clip class and add to it. So now, every time the event listener function is called, the circle's width and height will increase by two pixels each time. If you want the growth rate to increase, then simply assign a higher value to the variable. Then test the movie and you should see the growing circle animation. In this next example, we'll make the circle stop growing when it reaches a certain size. The movie clip instance I have on the stage is 100 pixels by 100 pixels. I'm going to modify the code so that the circle stops growing when it reaches 150 pixels. First, I'm going to create another variable that's going to determine when the circle should stop growing. I want the circle to stop growing when it reaches 150 pixels, so I'll assign a value of 150. Then, in the event listener function, I'm going to add an if statement that checks whether the circle's width or height is greater than or equal to the maximum size that we specified. Since the width and the height of the circle are the same, I can just choose to compare one of them. Once the circle reaches the maximum size, 
we can then remove the event listener so that the function stops getting called. To remove an event listener, use the remove event listener method. So now, when we test the movie, the circle is going to stop growing when it reaches the maximum size. In this final example, we're going to create a circle that alternates between growing and shrinking. Let's start from the beginning and create a couple of variables. Let's make a variable for how much the circle is going to change in size each time the function is called. Then, let's make variables for the maximum size and the minimum size that we want the circle to have. Lastly, let's create a variable that's going to be used to set when the circle is going to grow or shrink. I'm going to create a string variable. If it has a value of grow, then the circle gets bigger. If it has a value of shrink, then the circle gets smaller. You can choose other words to use instead of grow or shrink. In fact, this can even be a number. You could use 0 for grow and 1 for shrink. The important thing here is that the value changes. I'm going to initialize the variable with a value of grow. Then, let's create the event handler. In the event listener function, let's add if and else if statements. If scale mode is equal to grow, then we want to increase the size of the circle by adding to it. Else, if scale mode is equal to shrink, then we want to decrease the size of the circle by subtracting from it instead. To make the variable switch between grow and shrink, we'll need to add if statements inside the if and else if statements. In the if statement for the grow condition, we want to check for when the circle reaches the maximum size. This is when we want the variable to change to shrink. So if the width is greater than or equal to the maximum size, then we change the value of scale mode to shrink. Then, in the else if statement for the shrink condition, we want to do the opposite. We want to check for when the circle reaches the minimum size. When it does, we want to switch the value back to grow. So if the width is less than or equal to the minimum size, then we change scale mode back to grow. And when we test the movie, we'll have a circle that grows and shrinks.